Hello and a very warm welcome to the wonderful and distinctive sights and sounds of Delhi, the national capital of India, the world's most populous democracy. India is a country which loves its sport and following medal success in the women's singles at the last two Olympic Games, the sport of badminton now generates enormous interest here in India. And we're at the Siri Fort Sports Complex for semi-finals day at the Yonex Sunrise India Open. And this is the fourth event on the new HSBC BWF World Tour. 27 events in total, consisting of five different levels of tournament. 11 Super 300, 7 Super 500s, 5 Super 750s and 3 Super 1000s, plus the end of year finale, the World Tour Finals in Guangzhou in December. So as far as this year's calendar is concerned, with 27 events in total, these are just the first 12 tournaments of the year. And as you can see, all events are colour-coded with either green, bronze, silver or gold, indicating the progression from a Super 300 up to the gold, the Super 1000, the highest tier of tournament, apart from the World Tour Finals. So this event with the bronze colour coding next to the tournament name indicates it's one of the seven Super 500 events. So semi-finals day today, as I say, and we've got eight matches for you this afternoon. And we're starting with women's doubles and the Olympic silver medalists, Yule and Pedersen, beaten finalists here five years ago, are incredibly in their fifth semi-final, in their fifth appearance at this particular tournament. They're up against the beaten finalists from last week, Polly and Rahayu. Then it's men's singles and Xiao Bin of China is up against last year's beaten finalist Chao Tian Chen of Chinese Taipei. Then it's women's singles and Zhang Bei Wen, who yesterday beat the two-time former champion Sai Nan Awul, is up against another giant killer from yesterday, Jiang Ang Yi from Hong Kong, who beat the Olympic champion and two-time former world champion in yesterday's quarterfinal, Carolina Marin. Then it's back to men's singles and the former world number two, Shi Wu Chi, is up against the qualifier, Iskandar Zukanen of Malaysia. Then it's men's doubles and Astrup and Rasmussen are trying to become the third different Danish men's doubles pair to reach the final here at the India Open. They're up against the 2016 world junior champions, Hang Cheng Kai and Zhao Hao Dong. Then it's mixed doubles and Chopra and Reddy, the home interest in the mixed doubles, because they are trying to become only the second pair from the host nation to reach the mixed doubles final here at the Indian Open. They're up against Christiansen and Pedersen. Pedersen in her second semi-final of the day. Then it's the second of the mixed doubles and He Ji Ting and Du Jue, who are also former world junior champions. They're up up against a brand new pair from Indonesia, Praveen Jordan and Octavianti. Then we finish with women's singles, and these two players have a full set of world championship medals between them. It is the defending champion, Pusala Venkata Sindhu, who also happens to have won silver medals in both the world championships and the Olympic Games. She's up against the former champion here, and of course the former world champion, Rachanuk. Internon. So what a fabulous lineup we've got for you this afternoon. And with women's doubles being the first semi-final of the day, a chance for us to look at the semi-final lineup and the draw from the quarter-final stage. Well, from quarter-finals, seven seeds, as you can see, five different nations, two pairs from India, two from Indonesia, and two from Thailand. Now we're down to semi-finals, and as you can see, just three seeds but four different nations involved. And it's only the second time in the history of uh, the India Open that we've had players from four different nations involved in the women's doubles from the semi-final stage. The first time it happened was the very first Indian Open back in 2008. But we're going to concentrate on that top half of the draw with the Olympic silver medalists Yule and Pedersen up against Polly and Rahayu. So just two courts in action here at the Siri Fort Sports Complex. A venue which has been used for the Commonwealth Games, for Asian Games, for the Thomas and Uber Cup finals. 
and here come the Danish combination led out by the tall left-hander Camilla Rutteul she and her partner reached the final here five years ago when they lost out to Maeda and Suitsuna of Japan in that final so this their fifth appearance at this tournament and incredibly the fifth time in at least the semi-final well the fans here they certainly know their badminton very knowledgeable fans and the Danes winners of the Malaysian Masters two weeks ago the first of the HSBC BWF World Tour events at Super 500 level. This will be the second meeting between the two pairs, as you can see. The first time was at the group stage of the Sudan Cup World X Team Championships on the Gold Coast last year. Three games, as you can see, and that was an hour and ten minutes down in Australia, which the Danes won. So the Indonesians, as we know, are in very good form because they are looking to reach their third final in three tournaments played. One at the end of last year, the Hong Kong Open, and of course last week as well. So as far as Camilla Aruta Yul is concerned, 34 years of age now, born in Stegen, right in the north of North Jutland, and she and her partner down one place in the world ranking this week to number three. But they have spent a total of 90 weeks as world number twos. She and her partner, not only silver medalists at the Rio Olympic Games of 2016, they have three medals from the World Championships. A silver medal in Jakarta, in 2015 and two bronze medals seeing Guangzhou in 2013 and again last year in Glasgow so Christina Pedersen she's going to have a busy afternoon isn't she two semi-finals the 31 year old from Orborg and she and her partner well they've been looking very impressive so far throughout the tournament the three matches so far, all won in straight games. Number eight seeds yesterday from Thailand. So not only this is their fifth semi-final and their fifth appearance here at the Indian Open, it's also their third semi-final in three weeks. Winners of the Malaysian Masters, semi-finalists last week in Indonesia. So they too are in very, very good form. So to their opponents, the number three seeds from Indonesia, Gracia Poli and Apriani Rahayu. Rahayu is making her first appearance at the Indian Open, the 19-year-old from Kindari in southeast Sulawesi. They have gone up four places in the world ranking this week, the Indonesian pair, to a career high of seven. And for Gracia Poli, we're looking at Rihayo, but uh, Poli, she is in her third semi-final here at the Indian Open with a third different partner. That's pretty extraordinary, isn't it? In 2011, she reached the semi-final with Johari, and then in 2016, the semi-final with Amasaswari. So she's vastly experienced and they, like their opponents, have won all of their matches, as you can see, in straight games, including yesterday against the number five seeds, their teammates, uh, Della Destiara Harris and Ruski Emilia Vradipta. Very comfortable second game, as you can see, 21-9. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Camilla Litoyu and Christina Pedas, Denmark. And on my left, Gracia Poli and Apriani Lahayu, Indonesia. Christina Pedersen to serve to Gracia Poli. Love all. Play. Umpire 
Kang Sung Young from Korea calls for play to get underway. The first of our semi finals. One love. This is going to be a very interesting match and I think we're going to see lots and lots of rallies like that because the Danes like to play an attacking style, like to hit the shuttle in a downward direction and the Indonesians are more than happy just to defend. So contrasting styles always makes for an interesting contest. Two, one. Waterfall called on the Too flick high. serve from Apriani so Rahayu. Are you? Too high. The shuttle is too high. Yeah, too high. Too oh. Deemed to have been struck above the waist. Serving rules are going to change. Experimental period of a different rule which will mean that all players have to hit the shuttle, the entire shuttle, below the height of 1.15 metres. Oh, big gap. Yeah, who's going for that? Well, a week ago in Jakarta, at the Indonesian Masters, they lost in the final, the Indonesian pair, to the Olympic champions, Matsutomo and Takahashi. Three, four. Danish coaches, Kim Nielsen on the left as we looked at them, and Thomas Stangor. Five, four. No, there's never been a European women's doubles pair win the Indian Open. Come to that, there's never been an Indonesian pair that's won the women's doubles title at Six, this particular four. tournament. So whoever wins this semi-final will have a chance tomorrow to rewrite the history books. Oh! That's gone long.
Lucky net cords for Apriani. Six all. an opportunity Six. there. Nice drop. What a rally. It's going to be the longest in the match so far. And once again, the whipped defence across courts finds a gap in the Danish Eight, six. side of the court. There we go. Four straight points now. 41 shots, is that not the longest? Hit there so from so Pedersen. Nine, seven. placement so, so across the body of Eight, Rahayu nine. Judgment. Nine all. First of all, a very good placement of the smash from uh, Grecia Poli. Uh, but Ten, the attempted defence from Pedersen blocking cross court, had that have gone over, that would have been the shot of the day. change of pace from Gracia Poli and the Indonesians go to the mid-game interval with a two-point advantage
interesting that Agresia Pulley is willing to attack more than I usually see her do. Kim Nielsen giving the advice. Camilla Yule, the left-hander, is a seconds. former world champion one, in seconds. the mixed doubles discipline. Happened to be taking place here in India, in Hyderabad. In 2009, Call, won the gold medal with Thomas Leiborn. Change. Christina, is see. Eleven, nine, play. <laughs> Good angle. of rotational play as well from the Danes, sharing the workload. It's going oh. wide. Yeah, I like that final shot Stop, from so Christina Pedersen. Ten, slicing 11. it, so the racket head comes through very quickly. But because it's glancing below, the shuttle dies quite quickly. the best front court players in world badminton, Christina Pedersen. Take her on at the net at your peril. Nice, very, very nice. 12, 11. Two far back in the defensive stance, the Indonesians, especially Rahayu. Yeah, nowhere near getting that. Called. Called. Racket not pointing in a downward direction. Subsilver, 13, 12. Well, I'm not sure I agree with that. Simple way to tell is whether the hand holding the <laughs> racket is above the Subsilver. hand holding the shuttle at the moment all. of contact because if the hand holding the shuttle is lower than the racket hand, then the racket must be pointing in a downward direction. Oh, super. Lovely, lovely shot. 14, 13. great awareness of where the gap was.
What a rally. This has got to be the longest, surely. Unbelievable. Terrific. Oh, how on earth did they keep that going? Yeah. Amazing defence. 15, 13. Yeah, well, Polly has had success in the past many years ago in the mixed doubles. You need to be good at the net to play mixed doubles. 83 shots. Crikey. In fact, Gracia Polly reached the final of a Super Series event. The first year of the Super Series reached the final of the Swiss Open in the mixed doubles with Mohamed Rajel. Her only mixed doubles. Super Series final. 15, 13. Yeah. Play. It's a run of four straight 13. points now for Polly and uh, Rahayu. So desperate to try and get the acute 17, angle, just 13. overdoing it. Trains. And I wonder if that was a little bit of impatience there. Great shot. Eighteen six straight points. Twelve thirteen down oh. to eighteen thirteen up. Okay. Look at that between the legs from Christina Peterson. give credit to the Indonesians but you've also got to acknowledge the fact that the Danish combination have somewhat fallen to pieces there's been a number of unforced errors and that was most definitely a forced error that was a super shot from Apriani Arahayu in a very nice way to bring up a game point opportunities on a run of eight straight points. Short.
Yeah, well, finally, finally the run comes Stop to an someone. end. 14 20. But it's a mountain to climb now for the number one seeds. Second game point opportunity. Game, one by the number Croatia three Pauline seeds convert. 21 14 confirms the umpire. Opening game to Polly and Rahayu. 21 minutes for that opening game. Heng Hian, the Indonesian coach. Olympic bronze medalist in Athens in 2004 with Flande Limpele in Kian. The Danes will be wondering what on earth happened. Leading 13 12, and then it all fell to pieces. One game away, the Indonesians from a third final in three consecutive tournaments played. One at the end of last year. And then at their first tournament of 2018 last week in Indonesia. Second game, low ball. Play. Landed well in. One love. Come no, come on. One all.
And that's gone long. Well, another marathon rally. Two, and one, change. Stamina and fitness levels are going to be tested in this women's double semi-final. <coughs> Longest rally of the second game, I think. Ready? tallest of athletes Two, as you can all. see but they're certainly very powerful especially Rahayu okay. oh, what a return of serve now that really is one so, of so her well. favourite shots one of her Three, trademark two. shots Opportunity to put it away, but she worked well to get that opportunity. Smashing straight down the Holly, line. Get ready. Very difficult to defend across court. And the shuttle is hit straight down the line. 90% of the time, the reply will be straight. from the Danes. Five, two. Chase? Well, I've been telling you that the Indonesians trying to reach their third final in three tournaments played. They've actually been in the final of three of their last four tournaments because they won the French Open Super Series, then lost in the last 32 of the China Open. <laughs> before reaching the final of Hong Kong all so at the so end well. of last year. Three, and then, of course, the five. final last week in Jakarta. So if they were to win this, there'll be a fourth final in five tournaments. So, so well. Six, three. Holly, come here. Yeah, umpire's going to have a word. Don't delay, don't delay the game. Get ready. Don't delay the game, get ready. I think that was going ah. out. Well, they won the rally anyway. Well, I think Seven, the left-hander could have left three. that, and that would have gone wide of the court. <laughs> Missed it. Oh, what a transformation Eight, in this second three. game so far. Oh, 
it's incredible. She allows one player to go and tell down, but not the opponents. Good serve. Oh, goodness me. to the rally from Eight. Pittison. An indication of the frustration there. Just watch her after she makes this mistake. Oh, oh gosh, that's good. Sides attack, hit from the back of the court, hit straight. Follow forwards Nine. to the mid-court area. There's the second one, forward to the net. And that's what I was talking about a little earlier, about if you hit straight down that line, it's so difficult for opponents then to play across court that you can afford to take the risk to move forward to receive the straight reply. Serve goes long of that back line. Seven, nine. Four of the last five points to the Indonesians. the mid-game interval with a three-point advantage. The number one seeds, Yule and Pedersen. Well, it's quite clear to me the drift in this arena is having a big um, impact on this women's doubles semi-final. Christine. 
11, 8, play. Good flick serve. Play at the front of the court so, so, from Apriani Orahayu. Eleven. My goodness, absolute commitment to try and take the shuttle early. That that one, and then that one, and didn't it pay dividends? This is worrying times, in my opinion, for the Danes, number one seeds. Let's... So far. Ready? And I'm not quite sure why she wasn't ready. She looked to be ready. So! Indonesians back level. 11. Having oh. been five points adrift. 3-8 uh, in this second game. Great comeback. So, so well, this really is an extremely important phase of the match. It was about this stage in the opening game where the Indonesians just imposed their dominance. What a great serve there. Fabulous serve. 13, 11. Judgment. The call from Gracia Poli. Sobsobo, 12, 13. Well, I remember this scoreline in the opening game 12 13. And from this point, the Indonesians won eight straight points. level Oh, well taken. Yeah. Real commitment at the front of the court there from Yule. No, it was just before that.
so and there's a couple of times she's tried 14, to make the smash a little too steep. 15. And made an error instead. Ready? Again, really good so, so commitment ball. at the front of the court from the 16, left hander. 14. Racket arm outstretched, taking the shuttle as early as she possibly can. Oh. Oh, that's good judgment. Called long. Well, Gracia Polly out. is challenging that. Christina Pedersen has raised her racket and arm as to indicate to her opponents it was a mile out. How can you challenge that? Emotional challenge, I think, rather than believing that... Yeah, look at that. That's almost hit the Yonix sign at the back of the court. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. That's probably one of the worst challenges I've ever seen. 17-14. Play. Service error. 15-17. That's her second. Lahayu, Lahayu, please put your towel. Yeah, those sticklers for neat and tidiness with the kit boxes, these umpires. get the impression that the longer these rallies are the more it's going to suit the Indonesians a little bit of frustration perhaps of trying to finish off the rally playing it as tight as possible from Pedersen <laughs> so, so and well. the Danish girls point to their coach 18, yes that's what you told us 16. to do boss yes the straight follow Here's forward again isn't it Polly change the channel attack so, there so well. 17, in between the two Danes 18. clash of rackets between the Danes they're forcing the air up Polly Polly come here please don't solve the receiver already okay and serve until the receiver is ready. And yet the receiver has been told to hurry up in previous incidences. Go on. So, so well. 19, 17. Two point advantage and two points away from securing this second game.
Good rally. And it's a great defensive shot from Polly. This is terrific. the error once again with the smash down the center of the court and Rahayu is going to get told off here. Don't make a fist to the opponent. Well, because after the rally she quite deliberately showed a big pumped fist towards her opponents. So it's long after this. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. quite obviously. And the Danes celebrate because they have earned themselves two game point opportunities to send this semi-final to a third and deciding game. Played by so, so. Polly and Rahayu. One of the game points Player. has been well saved. serve is long the service error and the second game to the Danes 21-19 and as the umpire has just said it's one game all yeah the flick clearly long 50 minutes into the match and there's still everything to play for Seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. 
<clears throat> so the call of 20 seconds by the umpire, a clear indication for the players to return to court. Stating the obvious, I suspect the start of this deciding game is going to be crucial. Well, it may be hard work, but from a Danish perspective, they have to stick with the tactic of trying to hit in a downward direction. And as long as they're thoughtful with their attacking play, they will eventually get through. medals at World Junior Championships for Rahayu Silver in 2014 with Rosita So we knew she had talent and my goodness now she's playing with the very experienced Gracie Apolli coming on in leaps and bounds. Turn of serve. Four, two. We often see this in doubles, just guiding the shuttle in a downward direction to the midcourt area towards the tram lines. It's a very, very effective shot. Oh, it was a super block defence that set up the opportunity for the left-hander Yule to go forward to the net and play the winner. This is the one. What a defensive shot. between the two Indonesians and an indication Six, that they're not yet completely okay. with the understanding of what the other is doing or who should move where. And that's not surprising because it's not a year yet since they first formed their partnership. Contrast, this is the ninth year that the Danes have been playing 
women's doubles together. Christina. He just wants to try out the new racket, Rahayu. 6-2. Play. Yeah, good play from Polly. So, so I like that. Three, six. She too employing the sides attack. Hit straight. Look to move forward. Got to have the understanding of your partner, <laughs> though, that if you start moving forward, they've got to start moving back in court. This will be an important point because this must be hurting physically. Patient in their attacking play. Kick out on me. Kick out on me. Mm, no. It was good varied Kick attack out. as well. Kick out on me. I'm not quite sure why the on court, umpire is insisting on court, that they're supposed to tell down only and not take a quick gulp of liquid we're seconds away from this match being in progress for a, an hour another rally up in the 60s 7-4 play oh Rocky, what on earth was that yeah oh, so so ball Hands up Five, as if to say, seven. sorry, partner, what on earth? Look how loose that is. What was she thinking? No, she certainly wasn't thinking of doing that. That was obviously Pause. a bit of a blunder on her part. So, so Good exchange. I really like the racket so carriage so there from Rahayu. Six, eight. Kept her racket ready for the flat, fast exchanges. Look at that. And again.
<laughs> Little stamp of the feet in celebration there. One game all and a talk. Well, long Nine. back Eight. level. there in celebration. We've won eight of the last ten points. Challenge Gracia here. Poli called, challenge called out. From Gracia Polly. Instinctively, I thought that was out. I thought the line judge made the right decision in the mm. end. He looked to me as if he was going to indicate in, but it was clearly out, as you can see from Hawkeye. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. So, so more. Yes, sir. Play. That's gone wide. It's ten all. Ten all. <laughs> Another long, long rally. the number one seeds who have the one point advantage at the change of ends here in the third and deciding game my goodness me what a women's doubles what rallies Certain there's 
lots of reinforcement going on from coach Kim Nielsen. Coach. Keep varying the pace. On court, please, players. Don't hit everything hard. Look for angles. Take the pace Fully off occasionally. On court, please. And no doubt that Eng Hiang has probably been telling the Indonesians keep working the Danes. Because we saw in the opening game after some very, very long rallies, including a rally of 83 shots, and the Danes started to get a little impatient. I said this would be intriguing with contrasting styles between the two pairs. 11, 10. Play. Most peculiar movement after the flick serve there. Yeah. Trying to receive the straight. It's not normal. Eventually, the Danes break down the defence of the Indonesians. Yeah, she needed a couple of goes to finish it off, though, didn't she? Such is the quality of the defence of Polly and Rahayu. She held that for a long time, didn't she? defense from Gracia Polie. Look at that. Back on them forehand. Didn't just get it back, got it back with interest. shot to me. Of the match from Mahayu. Yeah, did very well to get out the way. Mm. 
Now she's been struggling with her low serves. Is she going to flick? No, good low serve. Super drop shot. And so too is that. Well, there was slight hesitation. <laughs> Christina Pedersen out for the count. I said earlier that the longer these rallies went on, the more I thought it would suit the Indonesians. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't accuse them of lack of trying. Christina, check the court. Serves from Gracia Poli. 14, 15. Oh, it was a good serve. Two pairs can't be separated. Almost an hour and 15 minutes. One game all, 15 all. Drop shot from Apriani Rahayu. I suspect from Christina Pedersen going for the backhand downward shot but it had no power on it and the placement wasn't that good either this one here and it got severely punished so a three point advantage and three points away from a third consecutive final for the number three seeds
two points away from the second final in two weeks. close this gap right now if the number one seeds want to get through to a second final here at the Indian Open well judged Fabulous run. Oh! Nera from Apriani. And now just two points the deficit. Been said there. I'm not sure what the problem was. Oh, it's gone long. Holds her head in her hand. And it means that it's match point opportunities three of them for Gracia Poli and Apriani Rahayu. Oh. Now, so often she's used the flick, she's struggling with her low serve, Gracia Poli. Brilliant top shot. Unbelievable. I don't believe it. And this time, the Indonesians convert their second match point opportunity and they beat the number one seeds Yule and Pedersen in three thrilling games 21-18 in the deciding game an hour and 21 minutes and Bully and Rahayu into their third consecutive final in Best three tournaments played the Hong Kong Open Apriani last November Rahayu, last week in Jakarta at the Indonesia 18. Masters and now here in Delhi at the Indian Open 
and it is in fact a fourth final in five tournaments played. That's how they did it, 21-14, 19-21, 21-18 the deciding game an hour and 21 minutes of wonderful women's doubles.